Hi there, it's Unicorn. On the vibe of non-fiction November, today I want to recommend you five non-fiction books about China. Actually, I may mention eight or nine books, but they're from five authors. Four of the books are written by Western authors in English, and one of the book is written by a Chinese author in Chinese. And unfortunately, the Chinese book doesn't have a translated version into any other languages yet. But I love it so much, so I still want to include it, and I will leave it. To the last, to my viewers who can read in Chinese. But if you don't read in Chinese, I still invite you to like listen to the synopsis of that book because it's just really a great book. The four English books cover variety of topics. They are not about the scope of China's fast development. They are more focused on the people and their day-to-day -day life that influenced by those developments. They set from the smallest villages to the biggest cities, discussing buildings, culture, and even food from a foreigner's point of view. I think they are valuable. If you want to see some down-to-earth nonfiction about China and some real Chinese people's personalities, not to see some China like from your morning news. But please do keep in mind, some of the books are published many years ago, so things may have already changed. But I think even with that, these books are worth reading. The first book I want to recommend is almost a nonfiction classic now. It's called *River Town: Two Years on the Yangtze* by Peter Hisler. Peter Hisler is an American author who went to Fuling, Sichuan, in 1996 and taught English for two years. During those two years, he got a chance to teach his students about literature and Shakespeare. But more importantly, she also got a chance to learn from his students about the local culture. He also traveled by boat and train in the province of Sichuan, and he witnessed the rapid changes of the place and how the local people adapted to those changes. He recorded their reaction to the policies like one-child policy, like the economics reform, and the build of three. Gorgeous Dam. I read this book about ten years ago and enjoyed and learned from almost every page of it. This is a portrait of the local history of Fuling and also a record of the experiences Hessler had as a foreigner. He wrote about the things that he encountered vividly and also showed the perspective from the people that he met, which I think is very important. This is actually the first book of Peter Hessler's China trilogy. So if you enjoy it, I also recommend you to check. Out the other two books in the series, Oracle Bones and Driving Country. After the trilogy, he wrote another book called Strange Stones, which is also worth checking out. I'll link all the informations down below. And Peter Hisler is teaching nonfiction writing in the University of Sichuan in China this semester. I think the students are super lucky, and I wish I can be in his classroom. The next book I want to recommend is called Factory Girls: From Village to City in a Changing China by. Leslie Chang. Leslie Chang works as a correspondent for Wall Street Journal in China for many years, and she also writes for the National Geographic. Chang explored how socioeconomic changes transformed individuals and institutions. Hence, this book, The Factory Girls. In China, a lot of people from smaller villages or towns choose to leave their hometown and move to a bigger city in order to get work. And they are called the migrant workers. In this book, Chang followed two young women about their migrant life and show you a picture about being a migrant worker. It's not about the working environment or something like that you always see about Chinese factories in the news. It's rather stories about how the migrant workers see about their life, their opportunities, and their losses. But this book also gets some critiques from the Chinese reading community that I noticed. For example, people may think it's Too emotional and not as objective as a nonfiction should be, because the author has a lot of her personal emotions blend in. That is all because the author's family immigrated from China to the United States, so she grew up in the United States but moved back to China to work. So she always compare herself to the migrant workers. Whether the comparison is necessary, I think I'll leave you to decide. The next book I want to recommend is *The Last Days of Old Beijing: Life in the Vanishing Backstreet of the City Transformed* by Michael Mayer. <laughs> 
I have to say, library books are really heavy to hold. Mir's story is similar to Hitler's. He's a travel writer from America, and he wrote several books about China. I need to admit that I chose this book to recommend just because it's talking about Beijing, which is a city that I grew up, and also I go back to visit at least. Not at least, like almost every year, and Beijing is changing so fast that every time I go back, I got a culture shock. Mayor lived in one of the oldest neighborhood in Beijing called Dashlar, which in this book they chose to go with the pronunciation of Dajalar, which is a common mistake about the pronunciation of that neighborhood that I think they need to change. However, back to the book, because Mayor lived in Dashlar, so he was able to communicate with the most local residents in Beijing and had some fantastic experiences. He recorded when he had fun with people in Dash. And also recorded the time when people need to be evicted because the plan was to for Dashlar to become this modern fancy place with large buildings and shopping malls and big roads, which. It is today. The book took over twelve years, so it's not a very detailed record about the histories in those oldest neighborhood in Beijing. But I think it has enough information to paint a big picture about the development of the city. Following, I want to recommend a book about Chinese food. It's called Shark's Fin and Sichuan Pepper: A Sweet Sour Memoir of Eating in China by Fuchsia. Dunlop. Dunlop is an English cook and a food writer who specialized in Chinese cuisine. She lived in China for 15 years, and when she first went to China, she decided to eat everything people put in front of her. So, as you can imagine, this is a book that full of the fun experiences that she had while eating everything people put in front of her, and also about the food culture, the beauty of. Chinese cooking and the history about the dishes and the different cooking style, and of course, this book also includes the conflict that she met when she want to try some different ingredients. I'm currently reading this one, and I really enjoyed the relaxing languages and the humorous writing style. Although it's a book written in English, I encourage you to read it in Chinese if you can, because a lot of the name of the dishes that you don't want to mess with. But no matter which language you decided to. Read this book in. I just have one suggestion. That is, don't read this book when you are hungry. The last book I want to recommend is by a Chinese author. Actually, she's a Chinese poet called Wang Xiaoni. She taught drama, film, and television literature in the University of Hainan for a couple of years. And this book she put together is called Shang Ke Ji.、Uh, translates to teaching notes. If I can do the translation, and this is a record of her thoughts during teaching. Although it's called teaching notes, it's not about the course that she taught. It's more about the thoughts she had after the many classes. And the thing that touches me the most in the book is the story of Wang Xiaoni's students. Her students had different backgrounds, and some of them are from underprivileged families who even cannot distinguish between movie and television. But they all share the qualities of being. Young people, the pressures of being a young people, and also the confusions. I liked how this book includes some of the work from Wang's students, so you got the first account of their mind. My review of this book from seven years ago was. 如坐针毡，如芒刺背 and it translates to reading this book made me feel like I'm sitting on a needle felt, or I have thrown on my back. And that's all the books that I want to recommend in this video. I hope you started to get interested in some of them. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and. Please tell me your book of choice of nonfiction November, or say hi in the comment section down below. Don't forget to happy reading. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye.